There are metrics that illustrate, and powerfully so, that your favorite hockey team's been pretty good at 5-on-5. Five five. It's something of a point of pride for Mike Sullivan. I'm not sure about that. Good morning to you. Good Tuesday morning. I'm Dayan Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports, and this is Daily Shot of Penguins. It comes your way bright and early every weekday if you're into football and or baseball. I also offer daily shots of Steelers and Pirates in the same place that you found this. Penguins 5, Rangers 2 last night at Madison Square Garden. I'm not here to be the wet blanket. They played quite well. Alex Nedeljkovic started that. Brian Rust was outstanding. Sidney Crosby had a couple points. Sid clinched a 19th consecutive point-per-game season, matching Wayne Gretzky and only Gretzky in that regard. Amazing achievement unto itself. And again, a nice W. I'm not here to knock it. But doesn't it drive you a little bit nuts when you see the Penguins facing an opponent that's as explosive as the Rangers can be and just shutting them down five on five the whole game really didn't give them much of anything. And in fact, in particular in the first period, taking it to them, really going into the New York zone with a head of steam and sustaining the attack. That's good stuff. All five on five. And yeah, there was the obligatory hiccup. They had the 3 nothing lead. Of course, the Rangers scored twice in the third period, and you kind of felt that it was going to flip on its head the way the game in Columbus and so many other games have flipped, and it didn't. They stuck with it. Again, nothing bad to say about this game. But when you're talking about a team being good at 5-on-5, five five, and that same team seems to crumble in literally every other situation, anything that could be classified as situational hockey becomes an F- minus for this group. Obviously, headlined by the power play. Nobody needs another episode about the power play. That's five on four. There's also five on three. They've actually been pretty decent at six on four because they've fallen behind in the third period, but situational hockey also means you get up 3 nothing and you make the rest of the game boring. You get up two goals in Columbus and you make the rest of that game deathly boring because you're facing the bleeping Blue Jackets. And then, you know what? If the game does go to overtime, including on those situations, when you tied the game up 6-4, on four, how about getting a result? You looked at the standings in a while. I wouldn't blame you if you hadn't. The Penguins, as I'm speaking to you this morning, are five points out of a wild card spot. Five points. Now, the the math is still way against them here. I'm not bringing that up to suggest there's a race going on. There isn't. But when you talk about those five points, when you talk about what that gap is and how it came to be, What you're talking about here is just more situational stuff. Penguins were 3-8 and in overtimes this year, in 3-on-3 overtimes, games that were decided within those extra five minutes. Most of those were decided within the first minute, incidentally. They were 2-3 and in the shootouts. Well, I mean, there you have it. Here's your season. And if I hear one more time from anybody, not just in the Penguins world, but in the hockey world, about how you can't coach up strategy in the extra session, it's just too chaotic, there's too much ice, Uh, figure it out, okay? Because some teams are better at it than others. This one's pretty lousy at it, despite having some pretty significant offensive talent. The shootout is another one. Well, what are you going to do? The shootout's just like an exhibition. You know, guys just skate down and try to beat a goalie. Make it more systematic than that. Make it something that a player has to earn, maybe in training camp. Yeah, they have shootouts, but this team has shootouts that get won by P.O. Joseph. Uh, Not making that up. 
Does that mean they're not taking them all that seriously? Or does that mean that P.O. is your best shootout guy? You have to figure that out. And I'm talking about Sullivan here, obviously. A lot of this has come from him where he's talked openly about three-on-three being so chaotic, there's really not much we can do or say. Doesn't do that anymore. Shootout, there's, there's nothing even to acknowledge or ask about other than if there's some kind of curious choice that he might make, like ever sending Evgeny Malkin out the way he did the other night in Columbus, only for Gino to skate down the rink and look like he'd rather have been literally anywhere else on earth other than taking that shot, that lame little forehand flick from 20 feet. Where are the shootout specialists? Where are these people? Do you remember when shootouts first came into vogue? Those of you who go back with the Penguins and Eric Christensen, remember all the stuff that he could do? He was a shootout ace. Mid-round draft pick, not super exciting as a hockey player overall, but money in the bleeping bank when it came to the shootout. Is there anyone looking at the analytical value of these points? that have gone missing to the extreme, and it might be extreme, it might not, that you would say, you know what, our fourth line is going to be populated by people who can get us these points. We don't care how they handle five on five. We don't care about this or that or whatever. We'll teach them how to just manage the clock at five on five. But we want them to be available for these games, for these situations in these games. How about just one of them, if not an entire line? How about you get one player who's just a shootout god? It could be somebody with the wheeling nailers. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Because whether you're in the NHL or the ECHL, if you're skating down the rink with nobody stopping you and a goalie to beat, theoretically, it's not that different. Situational hockey is where you coach. Situational hockey is where you can and should more rigidly than you know, any other facet. When we come back, J1Q. Today's J1Q comes from Jamaro, who says, DK, what needs to happen for Kyle Dubas to finally see coaching problems? How much... Does this team need to sink for him to finally notice that the system is old and out of date? Uh, Boy, there's a lot of different ways that I can tackle this one. I'll start with this. I have no idea because Dubas talks to reporters in Toronto or in Canada. He doesn't talk to reporters in Pittsburgh. He does a radio show with a team employee, which is Not at all the same as an actual interview with an independent media outlet. And if I sound like that's fresh on my mind, it it is. I was just in Miami for five days with the Pirates. GM was there. The GM made a trade at one point, this being Ben Charrington, for those of you who don't follow baseball. And he talked with Pittsburgh reporters. He said what he had to say about the trade to Pittsburgh reporters. He's been available to be interviewed, and he's always made a point of prioritizing the Pittsburgh reporters, and in this case, specifically the Pittsburgh reporters who traveled to cover the game to report back to Pittsburgh fans. See how that works? Neat, huh? It's taking care of the the city that's the first name of your operation. Crazy, huh? So if someone asks me on Daily Shot of Pirates, what does Ben Charrington think of this? Or why do you think he might have done this? I can explain it. I can at least try to explain it in some cases. And when I can't, I can't. It means I didn't ask him about it. But it doesn't mean that he played favorites with Canadian reporters. So that's one thing that I have to say, since you kind of sideways brought it up, or maybe you really didn't, and I just jumped on it. The other thing I have to say is that 
I don't think the system is outdated. I don't know where you're coming from on that, and I'm not going to put words in your mouth any more than I'd put in into a GM's mouth. But when you say outdated, that actually doesn't really line up with reality. Most of what the Penguins do is stuff that other teams are doing. The, their system isn't very different than others in the NHL. Now, if you want to criticize him for that, go nuts. If you want to criticize him for not evolving all that much from the system that they deployed in the Stanley Cup years, you can do that too, although there's been some of that. If you paid attention to this sort of thing during the second and third period last night at Madison Square Garden, you would have really seen I mean, they really went out of their way to skate backward and wiggle their sticks. Okay, that was a defensive posture and a half. The original Mike Sullivan teams, the ones, you know, back when they were appearing in the playoffs, wouldn't have done something like that with a collective gun to all of their heads. No chance whatsoever. Everything was just forward, 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 attack, attack, attack. Last night, it was a lot of backward, backward, backward. In some cases, comically backward because players, these veterans especially, aren't used to this. And you can see how awkwardly they approach it. But outdated, I I don't get. I, I, I don't see where something else occurred in the league that would make it outdated. If you want to know what the GM thinks about the system or what he thinks about systems in hockey or what he thinks about you know where hockey might be headed where there might be some trends or so forth you're going to want to check with the canadian outlets because they'll be the ones interviewing him i appreciate the question i appreciate everybody listening to daily shot of penguins we're going to do another one of these tomorrow 